With a rare Friday off, my daughter and I decided to take a small hiking adventure. We headed to the Great Smoky Mountains to do a kid-friendly trek into the area of the abandoned town of Elkmont, which was incorporated into the National Park upon its creation in the 1930s. Many of the original cottages and the Appalachian Clubhouse still exist and are being restored by the Park Service. So we came to hike the Jake's Creek Trail to the Avent Cabin, a simple three mile trek to the lonely cabin in the woods, once the summer retreat of noted artist Mena Trainer Avent. We also checked out Elkmont itself. Come join us for a simple day in the Great Smoky Mountains. Bet you can't guess where we're at. Go check out the We are in the Smoky Mountains. No, yeah, hold on. Can't I'm trying to work this thing. Okay. I have a Friday off. So I grabbed my kid. We headed to the Smokies. We're gonna do a little simple trail. Right now we are in the old abandoned town of Elkmont, which we've been to before. But we're going to do the Jake's Place Trail. Just a simple little three mile trail. Just me and kiddo. We're going to show you a little bit of the sights. Won't be a long video. But yeah. Awesome. Okie dokie. Thanks. Well, we're going to check out some of these old homes for the people who used to live here. A lot of them have been restored before we head out on the trail. We're just going to check it out. Ready to check out the first one, kid? Let's check out this log cabin looking one. Yeah, quite people-y.
Inundated with people for a moment. I wonder who gave the ball for a <laughs> Another little room. They did have electricity, but look. It's the old type of plugs. We only had two contacts. Oh, look. A light fixture. Okay. Probably yeah. did all that in, in this room. Walking through this town is like walking into another era, a different time, perhaps a simpler time, before cell phones and cyberspace came to dominate modern life. Each home we walked through represented a life once lived. Each eclectic home, each different from the other, was like a reflection of those who lived there. An extension, perhaps, of their personality. The type of people they were as they lived their lives deep inside the mountains of this amazing place. I'll have to switch to the Okay. Switch to the other camera briefly. I didn't charge my gimbal. It has died. <laughs> this is the second structure. Oh. Here's the kitchen on this one, kiddo. Looks like they enclosed the old porch and made it a kitchen. And this one's got some more, a little bit more modern. It's got the three contact plugs instead of the old two, like over there. Huh? huh? See, here's the sink. Refrigerator is probably over here where all of these plugs are. And the stove. The stove is probably right there since that's a 220 plug. Of course, you have to have people graffitiing it already. I mean, they just restored these things, so people are already scratching their freaking names. You can almost picture how the homes were likely decorated, where tokens of memories, such as pictures, hung on walls, where furniture was probably placed, just how they arranged their lives here. Wow. It was all like a window to an era that no longer exists. Pretty cool. On the next one. Here's the next one. Wow, this one's got a rug. Wow. Big porch.
Whew. Man, look at the view these people had. The homes here didn't appear like any type of blueprints were followed. They were simply built with the knowledge of carpentry in the minds of those who built them. Some rooms, Obviously. especially the bathrooms, were simply placed wherever they found the space. Again, this seemed <laughs> another reflection of those who resided here. Little bitty bedroom, some linoleum. There's a little bitty. Oh, it's. We'll go with a half bath on that. Here's the toilet, there's a little bitty sink. <laughs> Not much room for a bathroom, but. I guess that word would work back then. And there's a full bath. Huh? Still pretty small. Now that would just about be considered a half. It didn't have the shower in there. A normal size half bath. <laughs> and I'm gonna say this is the master bedroom since it's connected to the bathroom. Nice closet. Insulated. Probably not at all. Onward. Looks like it was a kiddo house, playhouse maybe. Can you almost see in your mind's eye the children running around? Can you almost hear the gleeful laughter, moments of innocent play? Wow, well, kiddo house with its own fireplace. Ugh. Bathroom, maybe? Me, I call duck. Me too, dude. One. You only have to duck a little bit. I had to duck a lot. <laughs> Me? Watch it, dude. I'm coming through. Ghost towns to most look dead. To me, they are alive. Alive with the ghosts of the people, families, friends and neighbors who used to live here. They shared their time on this planet here, together, in these homes they built themselves. No, this place bounded with life. Wow. Mother-in-law houses? <laughs> Making a joke. <laughs> it's a bookshelf. I can see where some graffiti morons have already hit these places. Uh, here, they're trying to cover this up. That was like a tag artist did that, and they've been trying to cover that up. That is gold paint on yeah, the wood, I see so that, that one. varnished wood, and they have a hard time getting it off. 
Oh, you guys just redid these things. I said, you guys just redid these things. Yes, they, the restoration guys and the black fireplace and the cabin cross, they wrote in white paint. Uh, and then I've noticed today one of the cabins is a busted out window. And, you know, it's sad. Yeah, it's, it's sad. extremely sad. These were done for people to enjoy, you know, to see what it was like a long time ago. And, and, have to deal with graffiti. Yeah, some people just have no respect. I'm oh, sorry, but people that deface things like this, caves and other natural sites, that just, that, that's one of my pet peeves. That annoys the crap out of me. That was a nice house right there. Next home. Yeah, this one still has a bed in it. Look at that, old style uh, fuse box. But only four main circuits, wow. It's like a restroom in there. The craftsmanship of some of these homes was amazing. You could tell the builders took pride in their work. All this built with knowledge passed down to them, likely from fathers and grandfathers before them. Each home was a personal extension of the people who created them. Even graffiti, even though they just finished a lot of these houses. Dang, that's a big fireplace. Here's the bathroom. And all the bathrooms are locked. You know why all the bathrooms are locked? Huh? Because these people would use them. So in all the houses, the bathrooms are sealed. Oh, wow. Now this one has a big kitchen. <laughs> As compared to other houses here. You notice how all the, the wiring and the light fixtures are all on the outside of the walls? Yeah. That means this house was probably built before electricity. You know, a lot of these walls are just, I mean, they, there's no, they're real thin, so there's no, there's no insulation or nothing in there. 
So there's no internal wall to put these things. Cool. Be back. This one actually had a ceiling fan. Is this one in the right Huh? This one still has a ceiling fan in it. So much like these bathrooms were like afterthoughts in a lot of these houses. Like they didn't have them and then when plumbing came through, they just kind of created a space for a bathroom. Wow, you gonna be skinny if I do here. <laughs> well, you're skinny. Oh, simple home, one room, fireplace. <laughs> Little electrical box. <laughs> cool. I like how to integrated rocks. For like shelving in the fireplace. I wonder if these were like little kid playhouses out here. The residents here used a lot of what the forest could provide in much of the construction of these homes. River rocks were used in many of the fireplaces and provided for the foundation. They integrated much of the Smokies right into the homes they lived in. Gorgeous. Okay, this appears to be the last structure. Last restored structure. I mean, they're still working on these other ones. Last one that you can actually go into until they get the others done. This looks like one of the bigger ones. grand living room. Wow, that bathroom has, has, an, has an actual stand-up shower in it. Yeah. 
little washroom, probably laundry room or what have you. Bedroom. A second bathroom. That's the first one I've seen that has two bathrooms in it. This is a cool house. Oops, can't get through here. Okay. Be back. I'm still working on that one. That one clearly under construction. That one. Oh wait, that one has a green sign on it. Let's go check this one out. Okay, well, it has a green sign on it, but clearly they're still working on this. There are green welcome signs in front of each structure you are allowed to tour. This house had a sign for some reason, but obviously was still in the process of being restored. This one is in as near, nearly as clean as the others that we've been in. Yeah, I'm surprised they let people in this one. Okay, be back. Okay, not a gimbal, but I failed to charge it up. We are out now on the actual Jake's Place Trail. We saw all the houses over there that were restored. Well, there's also a bunch of houses that were on this road that they did not decide to restore, and they've been knocked down. I remember that used to be a really big house right there on that corner. The rest of these have been torn down. You still see the remnants of them. There's Jake's Creek. Here's the remnants of another one. I think I've been in that one. When it was still there. Looks familiar.
It is a shame that they weren't able to save all these structures. But when they were here, I know a lot of them were in extremely poor condition. So between that and lack of funding for the park service, And the fact that people kept coming into these things and destroying them. They just couldn't. They couldn't uh, save them all. Okay, be back. Okay, back. More remnants of homes. Of course, the rangers in the town were talking and they said that some of those structures were lived in right up until the early 90s. Not really that long ago. I didn't know that. I thought this whole area, look at this walkway. I used to come up to this home right here. Anyways, I mean, I thought this town was long since abandoned in like in the 30s. During the park creation when they pretty much took over this entire town and integrated it into the park. Still see the structure or foundation. Here's the fireplace. line of poems along this road. It is amazing how much and how quickly nature has reclaimed this area. Yet I can't help wonder what it must have been like when this was a happy little town nestled here in the shadow of the Smoky Mountains. I wonder about the people and what it was like to raise a family here so close to the wilds of such a spot. It must have been an adventure. Like this home opened up right onto the creek. There's a wall right there. You know, it's like when they, they left the fireplaces on all these homes. It's almost like they left them here as tombstones. For what used to be here. Like memorials. Of what used to be here. Interesting. There's the steps to nowhere. And what was one time somebody's home. Makes you wonder where these families are now. What they're doing. <clears throat> How their life changed after they were, you know, moved out 
of their homes have for the creation of this park. As much as I love the Smokies, this is almost like a sad chapter of it. something living out here. Okay. Rambling on. <laughs> Be back. Okay, so they've left this home, surprisingly. Apparently, this is the home of David Chapman, successful Knoxville businessman and member of the Appalachian Club. He became the driving force in the effort to create the Great Smoky Mountains. So I guess that's why his home gets to stay. Since he's one of the park founders. It doesn't look like they've started work on restoration though on it yet. There's what's left of his neighbor's house. Imagine always having a sound of the creek back there to go to sleep to. Okay, be back. Still following along the old road. Had to do a little bit of a climb, but simple climb because we're on this nice wide road turned trail. Man, can you believe how gorgeous this is? Look at this. Still here to creek. Can't see it, but I can hear it. So <laughs> sinks. No, nope, not going that way. Jake's Creek Trail. almost at our destination for this trail. Like I said, this is a short little hike. To the Avent Cabin, where we're headed. The whole thing is not even three miles. 
this little trail. I don't even bother bringing my backpack. But you know, I should have brought the drone. <laughs> we could have went to Klingman's Dome. Well, yeah, fired it up from there. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is where we're at. Rhododendron City. Be back when we get there, which will be shortly. So the trail turned unexpectedly, unexpectedly narrow and uh, rather uneasy. and wet. It came off the road slash trail to this. Wow. Okay, be back. Okay, so we made it. To Event Cabin. There was no sign off the main trail back there. If it wasn't for the GPS, I would have missed the turn that brought you here. I'm not sure what the history of this place is. Well, I'll find out. Mena Trainer Avent was an American painter. She studied painting at the Cincinnati Art Academy and the uh, Academie Julian in Paris, France. She taught painting in Nashville and exhibited her oil and watercolor work in Massachusetts, South Carolina, and Tennessee. She often painted here at this cabin in what is now known as the Mena Trainer Avent Studio. She was a member of the Nashville Studio Club, the Nashville Artists Guild, and the Centennial Club. She lived from September 17, 1868 to January 2, 1959. 
Well, apparently you can't get in it. Please sign guest book. Oh. You have to reserve the place. Now that sounds intriguing. Can you imagine spending the night in this place? Wow. Kind of a treacherous little trek from the main trail to this. Especially for a little munchkin with limited vision. Yeah, you did good, kiddo. But there's a log book and stuff in there. I can see in the window. I don't have a problem. Oh, yeah? find out. The pictures I saw online, you could get in there. I saw a picture from inside, that's why I thought you could get in it. Apparently you can only get in it if you have a reservation. <laughs> okay. Be back. Okay, so the other door was open. rooms and stuff. For you to clean it after you stay here. door close especially at night oh wow it's the history of this place This is the lady whose cabin this was. The 
PC guestbook. Be back. Okay, I was completely wrong. It's not available to rent. They just keep the rocks and stuff to keep, like wind and stuff to keep it, the doors closed. You can go in, there's even a register in there where you can sign all the people that have visited the cabin. Apparently the lady that lived here was an artist back in the 1930s. I got pictures and stuff of her and some of her artwork inside the old kitchen area. Gives her whole history, which is way too long for me to give here, but well, you are allowed to go in there. You just gotta close it back up and put the rocks in front of the door when you leave. So that's it for this. <laughs> Reached our destination. So now it's time to go back. Wait, kid. Well, it'll be easier going back once we get to the back to the road. We got to get through this part first. Because uh, it's all downhill. <laughs> so this is cool. A nice little piece of history just kind of stuck out here in the woods. If what, like I said, if I didn't recheck my GPS, we actually went past. We went a little ways past the, the, the turn that gets to the cabin here. And I just happened to look at the GPS. I was like, whoops. And we backtracked. And that's when I saw this little turnoff that you can barely see. And there were some steps that went down. So you have to be looking for it if you want to find this place. But it's rather cool. I'd recommend it. This is not a long trail. And except for this one little short section, I wouldn't even say it's a quarter mile from the cabin back to where you link up with the main road. Maybe a quarter mile. And that's the only rugged part of it. Where you gotta watch your footing a little bit. But it's gorgeous. The main road itself, super easy hike, even though it's going uphill but it's rather gradual. So it's not hard at all. But from here, going back, it's all downhill. So, until something else comes along, I'll be back. On our way back, let's say we're maybe half a mile walking through these majestic woods surprisingly there's no people on this portion of the trail once you get past the area where all the former home sites are nobody wants to go any further apparently I think we saw maybe two hikers as we were going up we haven't seen a soul going back. Which is surprising for a Friday in the Smoky Mountains. But man, is this a magical place. Smokies are just... Oh, magical to me. I love it. I want to live closer. I just wish it wasn't always so crowded. I 
that's probably the main reason we don't come as often as I would love to. So, uh, yeah, that was the Jake's Creek Trail to the Avent Cabin. Short, easy trail, perfect for having the kiddos along. Because she wanted to do a trail and take some pictures. So that's what we did. Ian's working, which is why he's not here. <laughs> so it's just me and my child walking through the woods along that nice, beautiful creek with the sounds of the rushing water throughout the hike. Awesome. Can't get any better than that. Except maybe we could do it with a few less bugs. <laughs> but, uh, that's it for now. Be back. Okay, so, Jake's Creek Trail to Evan Cabin. That was our little minor adventure today. We're back at the car, getting out of the humidity, getting to drink, and we're heading out probably to chill in Gatlinburg for a little bit. So, uh, check out all our videos. Really love it if you guys subscribe to our channel and uh, join us again for our next adventure. And <clears throat> see y'all later. Keep your stick on the ice. Though the trail may have been far shorter than what I typically hike, it was a trail I was able to share with my daughter, and therefore it was a great day and memories were made. Sometimes the greatest adventures aren't in how long the trail is but in those who join you on the journey. My kiddo may not be as obsessed with hiking as my son and I, but I absolutely cherish the time she does join me on the trail. My children, my family mean everything to me, and I treasure all the moments I get to spend with them. Thanks to all of you for coming along, and we'll see you all out on the trail.